to the Invader Historical Foundation YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Claiborne. In this episode, we're going to talk about the nose gear. The Douglas Invader was a wonderfully designed aircraft and incorporated many new cutting edge technologies at the time of her construction. Most notable of these were the periscope turret system that she shared with the B-29 and the laminar flow wings with advanced flaps, which were groundbreaking at the time. However, one design element plagued the early days of her operation, the nose gear. There are many, many accident reports where the nose gear collapsed either on takeoff or landing. Aviation aficionados know that the predecessor for the A-26 was the A-20 Havoc, or the Boston to RAF pilots. The nose wheel was not a problem on the A-20, so what changed? First, let's look at the nose gears from a head-on view. You can see that the nose gear for the A20 has a traditional fork, like on a bicycle or a motorcycle, where there's a support beam on either side of the wheel. However, on the A26, the support beam is only found on the pilot side of the plane. This is because that the A26's nose wheel does not work the same way as the A20's. In the A20, the nose wheel just swings up and down on a single pivot like a normal forward landing gear. And don't up your gear until you're 50 feet above the runway. She has a ten but on the Invader, the nose wheel rotates 90 degrees as it retracts, and the removal of the other support arm was necessary to keep the wheel flat against the bottom side of the cockpit floor. The ground. Retract gear. But why does the nose wheel in the Invader rotate at all? It's because the A26 was originally designed to carry a 75 millimeter cannon in the nose with 20 rounds of ammunition. Due to this, there wasn't any room inside of the cockpit to adjust the floorboard. In trying to keep the profile of the plane slim, there wasn't a lot of room left between the bottom of the cockpit floor and the bottom of the fuselage. With such a narrow space left for the gear, the only option to make it fit was to rotate the gear and make the tire lay flat. That rotational action was the direct result of why so many early invaders crashed with nose gear collapses. The gears either did not fully rotate forward again, or they didn't lock into position and failed. Douglas did redesign the nose gear somewhat to help combat this, but those changes did not go into effect until several hundred planes were already built. And those changes were still prone to failure if pins were missing, damaged, or the hydraulic system had a leak. The cannon that the Invader carried was the T-13E1, which was the aerial version of a 75 millimeter or three inch cannon. To put this into perspective, the Sherman tank carried a three inch main gun. The main use of this gun was supposed to be anti-tank, anti-train, and light anti-shipping missions. The Invader was not the only plane to have carried this gun. The B-25G Mitchells were also fitted with a 75 millimeter cannon in the nose. Despite having the same type of gun, the B-25's gun was installed further outboard on the plane and recessed further back so that the gun loader sat behind and below the pilot instead of beside him. This allowed room for the B-25's main gear to raise and lower normally and be situated beside the cannon without the need to rotate like the invaders. Thus, the B-25 Mitchells never experienced the nose gear issues that the invaders did. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.